Hello and welcome back to educator.com and the AP Psychology course. Right now we're going to be looking at the perspectives and approaches that modern psychology has to offer. Now one of the things as a reminder that uh, we have is that the unit objectives from the College Board, I'll go through these uh, quickly with you, and so the objectives from College Board how do the philosophical perspectives shape the, the development of psychological thought? We've done that. Describe and approach, um, uh, describe and compare different theoretical approaches in explaining behavior. We've done that. But now we're getting into the more contemporary approaches, and we're going to look at both the strengths and the limitations of applying those theories to the behavior. And in a later lesson, we'll be doing this next bullet. Some key questions. How did psychology continue to develop from the 1920s through today? And that's where we're going to be looking at behaviorism and some of the other groups of uh, views that we have. What's the historic big issue? What uh, levels of analysis are we going to be examining? Whether it's the micro level, working at brain tissue wise, or macro level and more society wide. What are psych's main subfields? And that's where we're going to be looking at that in the next lesson. And then psychological principles that can help you as a student. Hopefully that will be in every one of our lessons. So perspectives and approaches. A perspective is something that gives us a different way to look at the same thing. It's a different lens, a different filter. And so one of the things that I will do is I will take a little teddy bear or a stuffed animal and I will put it in the middle of my classroom and literally in the middle of the classroom. So if, if this is my classroom, I will literally put it in the middle and I'll ask my students to draw what they see. And so just as an example that I can do here with you right now, I have this hand. If I were to ask you to draw what you see on this hand, you would be drawing something very different than what I would be drawing. We both would be drawing a hand, but your hand would not include fingernails. Mine would. Your hand would not include knuckles. I have knuckles back here. And so when we're talking about perspectives, we can look at one thing in the middle, but we look at it from different points of view. Psychology's biggest question, nature versus nurture, biology versus experience. There's this idea of biological determinism, biology is destiny, or environmental determinism, blank slate. So pretty much you've got the extremes. So you've got bio over here, and all the way over on the other side, you've got the environmental over here. But then the real question is, how much of each contributes to the whole person? A lot of people will say, it's your biology. You can't help it. It's just the way it's going to be. Some people say it's all about the environment. If a person grew up in a different environment, then things would be better or things would be different. But the real question is, how much of each contributes? How much of each? So how do we view the world to answer that question and others? I love this Maslow quote. If the only tool you have is a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. Abraham Maslow is a famous um, psychologist we'll look at in a little bit. But think about that. If the only tool you have is a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. Going back to the first lesson, what is your schema? Or what are your multiple schemas that you have about the world? What lenses do you use? What information do you allow to filter in to your brain and into your mind? What information do you not allow to filter into your brain or your mind? And that's what perspectives in psychology do is they allow you particular bits of information that you focus on while ignoring or minimizing the impact of the others. Modern psychological perspectives, we have quite a few. Notice that there are eight of them here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This last one, biopsychosocial, was just added for the fall of 2013. So I'm going to go over each one of these in, uh, in this order. 